Hello and welcome back to Wild Sun Art Studio. My name is Robin Sun. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. So today we're cutting paper cuts and considering the possibility of enlarging, well, at least my vocabulary, maybe other people's too. So, um, auspicious was one word that I came up with, conducive to success or favorable. I always remember, um, like something, people talking about something happening on a certain date or in a certain place that was auspicious. And, um, that meant that it was okay to sign a contract or get married or, I don't know, meet somebody or have a party or something. And equanimity, which I just want to put some extra N's and M's in there. Um, and while I was looking it up, I misspelled it. And instead of A, I put an I, equanimity but it's equanimity. Mental calmness, composure. I wonder what spelling has to do with mental calmness. Evenness of temper, especially in a difficult situation. Well, today we have a beautiful situation. I am making some, um, hold on. I am making some paper cuts. Ta-da! I just made one that I really, 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 really like. Um, that one I really like. It's kind of cool, eh? Um, but I think it was this one. No, it wasn't this one, but this one's really beautiful too, don't you think? Oh, it was this one, this orange one. Check that out. Um, this seems, I don't know, like chrysanthemum flowers, I want to say. Isn't this beautiful? Yeah, there's something sort of Chinese about this. Like these diamonds, these like curves. Anyway, I really, really love it. Yeah, so I'm making lots and lots of... This one actually is really, really pretty too, isn't it? Isn't that nice? I think this is another one of those sort of chrysanthemum, Chinese chrysanthemum place, but I love how I did the heart out here. Maybe it's Islamic chrysanthemums. There's a thing about art and depiction in Islam. It's about not uh, uh, recreating something that God made, like um, people. Something about not drawing people. That's why there's so many incredible patterns in Islamic art, maybe sort of chrysanthemum -y. I suppose that's a word. Probably not in the dictionary. So see how sort of fine and delicate the blue one is and then how kind of chunky the orange one is. It's funny how they come out like that sometimes. I mean, I think I've said this before um, that I'm often completely surprised by what I come up with. It's like, oh wow, look what that did. And I thought at one point that if I was going to sort of consider myself to be expert at this, um, that I might want to make cuts that, ooh, check this one out. 
that's pretty with all the waves. This looks sort of Asian Indian. I think I was saying something about the beautiful designs of Islamic art because they're not drawing people. I don't think they draw much in the way of animals either. I don't know. I can't remember. This is information from a very long time ago. Uh, ooh, check this one out. Hey, wait a minute. That's bent. I don't know. I'm just sort of going on. And I'm supposed to be talking about vocabulary words. If I get get um, the sort of out of place in my thinking, then I'm not having mental calmness. I'm not having equanimity. Oh, well, wouldn't be the first time in my life. Uh, check out that one. That's really pretty. Um, it's got, let me see if I can do this. It's got sort of a big boldness in the hearts on the edge, but then there are all these pretty fine lines coming into the middle. I don't know. We like it. We like it, Mikey. Ooh, this one's kind of... I have something in my eye. Checker bordery. There in the middle. It's kind of cool. Here's another dark purple one. It's really, really nice. It has a kind of simplicity to it. Yeah, so that was a long time talking about paper cuts without actually making any. Ooh, zipper in my eye is still in my eye. That's a drag. So the last couple of videos that I've made, and obviously this one too, um, you can see all my little fluffy papers. Um, I was thinking, why am I making videos on a messy desk? And then uh, the, the last time I asked myself that question, I said, because there's something kind of juicy about all these projects mid stage. Da -da 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 -da. That's just kind of fun. Now, see this how it's uh, uneven up here? You don't have to cut that off, but sometimes if it's quite as uneven as that, it's nice to cut it off. I haven't done any of these. Little mandorlas. We've talked about mandorlas. It is a Sanskrit word. A mandala is a circle, a whole circle, the whole circle, and a mandorla, which is this kind of almond shape there, um, is when this circle and this circle kind of overlap and you'll see it makes an almond in the middle. That's a mandorla. And it's an ancient Sanskrit word. We're talking a lot about Asia in this video. I was just trying to think if I knew any Native American words or French words or, I don't know. It would be conducive to my success <laughs> to, um, yeah, to have a bigger vocabulary in general, although I do have kind of a big vocabulary. I was thinking about that the other day about how 
if you um, I was thinking about teaching kids to read and if you just read a lot I mean you one as a parent or an aunt or an uncle or something um, if one reads a lot then kids think oh that's a cool thing to do and and we will read because our parents read because we want to mimic our parents because clearly our parents have survived that long so that's a good thing and and we as humans are um, somewhat hardwired to guess that if our parent parents have managed to survive then we should do what they do so that we manage to survive too that behavior would be auspicious. <laughs> this could be really obnoxious, eh? I just want to use the words a lot so I get it in my head and then I will express myself with big words. Or let's let's say it this way. I will express myself with a more varied uh, vocabulary and I will be somewhat more interesting to listen to or you know maybe it's just entertaining for me I need to finish that thought I was thinking that vocabulary um, I think comes if parents are using those words a lot of the big words that I know I I have this like automatic memory of my one or the other of my parents using those words too. So that came out nicely. Let's flip up this thing. It's really pretty. So this is the ram's horn that I really like. It's a, a it comes out of Ghana. Uh, it's called it. it Idinkra, Adinkra, A D R I N K A, I think. I used to think that was an I too. Maybe I have some sort of aversion to A's. For no particular reason, I just pronounce them as I's, and so then I think the word is spelled with an I, and then I get confused. I used to have supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Actually, I don't know what that word means, but I used to have very good um, spelling, and I have noticed as my life has gone on, and I think it's just stress, but um, my spelling has gotten worse. <laughs> oh, well. How are we doing for time? We're doing okay. Let's put a heart right in the middle, because I keep putting them on the points of this triangle and now let's do this because I love this look what if I what if I pull this in a little bit there we go all right now my hands aren't where I thought they were so I'm gonna have to pay attention let's do this I'm gonna have to pay attention to where my hands are and yes I think that if we use big words with our kids then our kids will learn them I'm very much hoping I used enough big words with my kids. So here's this interesting thing. I noticed that one of my kids um, would have a, end up with a different um, pronunciation for a word and I would think well if he knows how to 
if he's using it correctly, how can he not know how to pronounce it? Because usually, I mean, well, not usually, but for me, when I heard my parents say it, that was the pronunciation. So it wasn't very complicated. Um, and I couldn't figure out why he could know, he could use the words properly. He knew what they meant. He said them correctly. I mean, he used them correctly, but he didn't have the right pronunciation. Anyway, I couldn't figure that out for the longest time. And then I realized he was seeing these words written on the computer um, in various contexts. Contexts. Plural of context. Um, where somebody wasn't saying the word to him, he was just reading the word on the computer. And he would apparently go find wonderful websites and stuff where people had big vocabularies. Um, but they, you know, it was the written word. So he didn't see them. So that was really cool. I thought, wow, what a smart kid. All right. Let's see how this one comes out. This is going to look good on a black paper. Alrighty. So in this one, I wanted to get lots of these little lines that were so pretty on the one before it. Let's make this all black so you can see this pretty well. Vocabulary and art. Maybe that could be the name of this video. I don't know. What do you think? Let's pull us back out. If I can do this without. There we go. Pretty good. Pretty good. Let's have auspicious there, an equanimity there, and uh, let's use this one. Oh, that's a pretty good one too. La tra la. Oh, I find that cutting paper cuts, especially if I turn off all the music, all the noise, all the la 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 la, um, that cutting paper cuts brings me to equanimity. May you have equanimity in your own, well, your own life in general and your own art life specifically. And... May I wish you an auspicious life, auspicious details to your life, where and when and how and why and who your life is with, um, so that you it will be conducive to your success and favorable to the outcome of the planet. You get a double blessing today because we had two words. Thank you so much for hanging out to my somewhat silly um, vocabulary and art video. I'll see you next time. Bye.